Hey, welcome back to Johnny Builds, where this week I built these three stools out of steel with stained Shosugiban tops. Now, these are made to go with the kitchen island that I recently built. There's a link to that video right up there in the corner, and it turns that into sort of a part-time breakfast nook. But not only do they do that, but they lock together with magnets and form a table. Let's get started. To get started, you'll need some of this 14 gauge, one and a half inch square tube steel. And I used about 55 foot of it total. Each one of the legs is 25 and three quarter inch. And I'll leave a link down below for free plans and a detailed cut list on everything you need to build this project. And after I cut all the legs, I moved on to cutting six of these nine inch stretchers. Then you need to cut 12 of these 12 inch stretchers. Before moving on to welding, you want a good, clean surface to stick together. And here you see me using my angle grinder and a flat disc to get rid of any burrs or mill scale still left on the pieces. I built up a little jig on a piece of MDF because this was a good flat surface to weld on and I don't have a welding table just yet. I'm a brand new welder and for a long time welding projects really intimidated me but with this one I decided to just dive right in. I really got the hang of it. My beads weren't pretty but it held together well. This is totally doable if you're a new welder. With the first side tacked up, I flipped it over and then welded up all the joints on the second side. This project is all about repetition. After that first leg assembly was complete, I built five more the same way. I cleaned up all the welds with a flap disc and the six leg assemblies were finished. Now I could join the two leg assemblies together with the nine inch stretcher we cut earlier and I used these magnets here to hold everything in place while I tack them together. And now I'll take a second to say, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the projects I've got coming up. And a big thank you to everyone that's subscribed already. For the stretchers on the opposite side, I decided to change it up a little bit and use these 45 degree trapezoidal pieces that are about 10 inches long and reference those off of a eight inch piece that's 90 degrees where it butts up to the first trapezoidal piece and then 45 degrees where it meets back with the side of the stool. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about here in a second. But first I use my angle grinder to clean everything up and get it ready for welding. Here you can see how these 8 inch stretchers fit up against that 10 inch stretcher. Another thing to note is that these two stretchers form sort of an upside down Y and as you'll see here in a second they are going in opposing directions on each side of the stool. With the three stools all welded together, I can move on to building the seats, which are just made from 2x4s. Each seat is comprised of five boards that are 12 inches long and 3 inches wide, and here I'm ripping that 2x4 down to 3 inches. Once all the 2x4s were ripped, I marked them at 12 inches, set up a stop block, and cut 15. You definitely don't need a domino to put these seats together, but I have one and it really helps keep everything aligned. You could just glue these up without any sort of domino or biscuit. It would work just as well. You might have to spend a little extra time flattening the boards. I had to make some adjustable feet for these stools, so I used this one and a half inch flat stock steel and cut it to one and a half inch square. I cut 12 of these for the adjustable feet and then 12 more for the attachment tabs for the seat. 
Then I came back on the drill press and drilled out a hole for each one of the tabs on the adjustable feet. And then came the tricky part, trying to line up this little 5 16 nut over that hole and have it line up to where I can thread in the adjustable foot. I actually messed up more of these than I'd care to admit, but I did end up with 12 good ones and that's all that counts. I ran a bead of weld all the way around each one of the adjustable feet and these are those attachment tabs for the seat. I finished up with a flat bis to clean up all the welds and then tested out one of the adjustable feet, which worked great. I got rid of any glue residue and flattened the seats using my hand plane. The three stools all locked together to form a table using these rare earth magnets that made up to a half inch piece of flat stock steel. After marking out the location using the magnet itself, I used this straight bit to route in a little groove that the magnet will sit down flush and I came back with a chisel just to clean it up and make sure everything fit properly. The process is the same for the inlaid flat steel and here I'm showing you how I use the piece to set the height of the router bit. And then the steel inlay gets attachment screws drilled in on each side. I cleaned up each one of the stools with my orbital sander getting rid of any of the remaining oil or mill scale and then came back in with a rag and some mineral spirits getting everything ready for paint. Speaking of paint, I use this Montana matte black spray paint and this stuff is just awesome. Link in the description down below. And a shout out to Mike at Modustrial Maker for the tip. Before I move on to the show Sugiban process, I sanded everything up to 120 grit and broke over the edges just a little bit with my orbital sander. And now for my favorite part, burning and staining wood, Shoshugiban. If you can't tell, I'm a little obsessed with this technique. I did a tutorial video on exactly how to do it. There's a link over there in the corner and down in the description below. After I was done giving all the seats a light char, I came back with a wire brush to clean up the surface and then wiped it down with a paper towel. I went back to Home Depot and had them mix me up a few different colors of the stain. Now this one right here is the tangerine. This is in the brochure. This is one they already include. I did the red. I already had this color right here. but. I did a purple as well, and this one was not in the brochure. I told Home Depot I wanted purple, and the nice lady at Home Depot mixed this color up for me and it came out great. And of course the process is the same as I've done in my other videos. I put on the stain, wipe it off, and then come back with a sanding pad just to bring out some of that natural wood. Now it was time to attach the magnets and the plate steel and I mixed up some five minute epoxy, laid in the magnets and then secured it with a couple screws that came with the kit. There's a link to the magnets I used down in the description below. Once the magnets were attached and the steel plates were attached, I came back with my favorite finish, a Minwax Wipe On Poly and you see how vivid those colors get when you put the finish on them. And last I attached the tops with inch and a quarter screws and these stools were done. I built these three stools to complement this kitchen island that I built here a few weeks ago. And they turned this island into a part-time breakfast nook, a place where we can eat. And then when we're not using it, because I have a small kitchen, we can nest the stools together over in a corner. They can make a small table that can either be a coffee bar or a serving table, something like that. And I decided to stick with the stained shoisugiban theme that I did for the tabletop of the kitchen island on the stools themselves, but I experimented with a few different colors that I hadn't tried before. If you haven't watched that tutorial video or the video on the kitchen island, please do so. And let me know what you think about this project down in the comments below. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up button and please make sure you get subscribed. Thanks for checking this one out and we'll see you back here next time.